going to talk about Cubes. It's a lightweight OLAP framework. Uh, it's an open source Python framework, which you can find on, on a GitHub under Steven and Cubes. And the OLAP set for online analytical processing, and Cube is lightweight OLAP. It's a framework which allows you to create web applications like this one. This is public procurement of Slovakia. It's a reporting application where you can do the aggregations and do the aggregation browsing so you can see the details um, of, your, of your data and at, at various aggregation levels. The core of the, uh, of the Cubes framework is the analytical model, which provides a business or analyst point of view on top of your physical implementation of your data. Um, you are not looking at the, at the particular uh, records, uh, rows in the tables, but you are looking at something which is called a fact, which is measurable. A fact can be an, an invoice, it can be a call, it can be um, any kind of transaction in your business, and you can measure it. So it's invoice amount. It's like call duration if you are measuring the, the telecommunications data. Um, another property of the data is a dimension, which describes um, how the context of the of the facts, so it's for example location or where the fact happened. Cubes also allows you to put more metadata on top of your data. So this attribute is going to be a label, which I'm going to use in the application. This attribute is going to be a key, which I'm going to use for for aggregation, and it's and it's and it's completely localizable at all the levels at the at the logical model uh, logical model level and also at the data level. Another thing is aggregation browser. So it's, this is the ma main object, which allows you to do, well, the aggregations, to aggregate the measures of your, of your facts. So for example, here, you have the aggregations of the contracts by particular uh, segment. So it also allows you to get more details and more detail look on your, on your data. Uh, aggregation browser is using the concept of a, of a, of a cube cell. A cell is is a context of interest, so something you are, you are currently looking at. And from the, from the web user's perspective, it can be something which can be described as a, as a multi-dimensional breadcrumbs to the data you are currently looking at. This is how we use it in Python. So you have a browser, you just say aggregate and, and a predefined cell, and optionally you can drill down or not. I'm going to s explain what, what does it mean. So uh, this result contains a summary and a drill down if you asked for according to certain dimension. If you are just interested in a summary of your cell, you just do the browser aggregate and the cell, you get a summary. If you would like to see the details, you specify the dimension or more dimensions through which you would like to do the drill downs. You can also specify the level because dimensions can be hierarchical. So for example, for date, you can have a level at the, at the year level, at month level, and the day level, and you can have even multiple kinds of dimensions. So for example, you can have date split by year, month, a day, or you can have year split by year, quarter, month, a day, or a year, week, and day. And this is called this is called drill down. So I'm drilling down into da into data, so to getting more details. Um, also, we can get a really you can eas really easily create a table such such this. And this is also thanks for the metadata I was talking about. So you know which one is label, which one is the key. So we just use the use the iterator to go through your results and generate this kind of table. There is much more. You can get the details within the cell, so you can get the facts, you can get the values of certain dimension, and you can also describe the cell, so to create the, the multi-dimensional breadcrumbs I was mentioning before. Another, another function is slicing and dicing. So you can get, for example, uh, you have a data of, con uh, of contracts, and you can get construction work in April 2012. You have three kinds of, of, uh, of cuts you can, you can cut the cube through. It's, a, it's one single point, you can have multiple points, and you can specify a range for, for dimensions which can be orders, for example, the date. Another nice feature of cubes is implicit uh, discovery of hierarchy. So if you already define the hierarchies in the, in the model and you are, do, you are doing the drilling down, so you are just using in the, in the, in the two, two examples at the bottom, you can see I'm using the same, same function, only aggregate, because the cubes know knows that the next level, in this case, after the year is the month, so I get uh, the, the drill down by month. By month. There is a currently implemented browser which supports a uh, SQL database. There was uh, Mongo backend as well, but uh, the support was, was dropped. And the data you have to have either in the star or snowflake schema. Star schema looks like this, so we have a table in the middle and you have dimensions tables. Uh, snowflake schema is just more decorated um, 
star schema, uh, very simply said. It also works with generalized tables, so with really one big table. And there is also an HTTP server called Slicer, which allows you to provide uh, uh, all up functionality through HTTP, and it works through sending JSON, JSON queries. Um, the future is I would like to get more formatters for the data visualizations and a JavaScript library, maybe more backends and variables you can compute. But I still would like to stay light, so it, it has to be a lightweight framework, not like full featured all up framework. You can get the full presentation here. It's bit.ly slash cubes dash EP 2012, so EP stands for EuroPython, and you can get more information here. Thanks.